Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. Today, I'd like to go into some detail about the subsurface scattering uh, fast skin material in 3D Studio Max. So this has been in Max um, for a few versions now through Mental Ray, but it was never really integrated all that well, and I think it, it still confuses a lot of users. So I want to kind of make a, a one-stop shop where you can go to get a quick idea of how you should be testing this material, like the, the environment that is most conducive to testing. And I want to show you a few features that will get you up and running really quickly um, for playing around. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. That's for you to, to sort of experiment with on your own. I just want to get you up and running as quickly as possible. So let me show you around the scene a little bit. I've created a typical studio setup here. I've got my, my backdrop and um, I have a point light and I'm using only one light. I'm not using a, a three point light setup or anything complicated because this is more about the material than it is about the lighting. So having lighting from just one source is really gonna keep things simple. And this one source, I'll also indicate, is just a point light. It's not an area light at all. And I do that because if we had soft shadowing, um, it would it would sort of muddy the effect. It would make it hard to see the subsurface scattering in action. Um, and it's, of course I have to enable ray trace shadows. I want those nice harsh shadows. Um, another thing I did that I want to show you is uh, of course I'm using mental ray because that's how we get the subsurface scattering material but I've disabled final gather which is sometimes on by default. And again, same as the uh, as the area shadows, the reason I turn that off is because if if it's on, it's it's just going to make it harder to see the the subsurface scattering showing through. So I've turned that off. Oh, uh, one more thing, I'm using logarithmic exposure control. Um, I found that when you're using uh, photometric lights, Studio Max wants to push you toward photographic exposure control, which is really good in some instances. I was really impressed with the functionality there, but I found better results when you're testing with logarithmic exposure control just because it's easier and I think it gives you better contrast in the final image. Okay, what else? So let's take a look here. All right, let me take a quick render, show you what we've got to start with. Okay, so you can see the the harsh shadowing, you know, this is, this is the perfect setup for testing out a, a subsurface material. I'm going to open my material browser here and select all my objects and I'm going to pick the subsurface scattering material, this fast skin material. I click OK. And I'm going to apply it to all these objects. So uh, let's take another render and see where changing the material sort of drops us off. Okay, so we've made a, a little bit of progress. You can I don't know if you can see it because your video is probably going to be uh, flash encoded, so it's not great, but there is a little bit of change out here in the border of some of these objects where the, where the, the transition from light to dark is really extreme. Um, the really soft round objects like the sphere and the, and the knot, not so much, but where the shadow is cast, yeah, you can see it. So let's really quickly take a look at some of these um, some of these options here in the material and then I'll show you which one is the most important, which one you should start with. So of course we've got um, a little bit of information about our light map. This helps you to increase or decrease the, the render quality um, of, the, of the material. Um, we can also add bumps if we wanted to. This is a, just a typical mental ray bump shader. You can apply a map just like you would with a regular material and then you can assign it uh, the, the height of the bumps. Now the, the fast skin material actually gives us three layers of, of subsurface scattering because that most closely resembles the way that skin actually diffuses light. On the top level, the epidermal scatter, um, you have sort of one type of scattering, one value. Um, and this would be just how the, the top layer of skin will diffuse light. And behind that is the subdermal layer scattering. 
and this can you can assign it a different color you can assign it a different weight so um, which one of these scattering uh, effects should take precedence that's what you would use the weight for and the scatter radius so if the first layer is not very diffusive the next one could be very uh, you know very diffusive and so this can help you to, to sort of manipulate the effect and of course the most important the most um, commonly seen is the back surface scatter color which is you know when you shine a flashlight over your fingers uh, you know, through your fingers in a dark room or, or from behind someone's ear, that red color, that's what this is. And so this lets you manipulate the that effect there. Next, these are pretty self-explanatory, the specularity and reflections. This lets you determine how shiny uh, the skin material is. If, if the person's been running, your character's been running, you can make them look sweaty. You can alter uh, the the amount of reflectivity of the material and all skin has just a little bit of reflection at glancing angles uh, in a frontal kind of way. So, and of course you can alter any of these with, with maps. So it gives you some pretty robust options here. And finally, the advanced options, and this is where you'll find the most important um, spinner in this material. It's down here, the scale conversion factor. This spinner will let you tell mental ray how big your object is and mental ray will be able to scale the material accordingly so these objects are relatively small in 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 the world space and so when i leave the scale conversion factor at 1 the the material is is it's too big it's not scaling properly for the size of the object so i can change this to to just point 1 and when i re-render you'll really see a difference. Now honestly, I have spent hours and hours of frustrating time trying to get uh, you know, this kind of, of change in my render simply by manipulating these diffuse weights and the radius and depth um, values. And I would have had to turn them up to very extreme levels in order to get this kind of render um, out of this material. But instead, all I had to do was alter this scale conversion factor. And so that's one of the first things that you're going to want to do when you're testing out this material. All right, so there you have it. I think I've given you uh, a good starting point for playing around with this material on your own. And I do encourage you to do so because this is a lot of fun. You have that tool available to you. So, until next Monday, happy rendering, and don't forget to tune in again for another Monday movie. Take care.